Anyway, uh, first of all, let's have a show of hands. How many watched the video that was on the um, website that uh, Dr. Wallace gave us to go look at? Well, we didn't maybe this guy didn't watch it, but it's been, <laughs> it was watched 145 times. I just checked it tonight. So. Oh. Some people did. Maybe those are the ones who didn't show up. I watched it 145 times. Well, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, one thing interesting. Uh, it, it really is a very interesting history of um, artificial intelligence, and I don't want to steal uh, any of his, Dr. Wallace's talk tonight. But, uh, anyway, he talked in the video about Alan Turing being the, uh, basically the father of you know, computer science. And uh, Alan Turing, for those who know the man, also was very instrumental in <laughs> Breaking, I believe, the German code. Yeah, was that the, um, what was the, um, Enigma. Enigma. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Anyway, the one thing that was very nice, the man was, in all, in all respects, very much a hero and, uh, to the world and to humanity, uh, but humanity treated him very, uh, very badly, and uh, he died a very premature death. Uh, I just ran on the BBC yesterday where Gordon Brown of England uh, formally, posthumously apologized for what humanity did to the man. So it's a little bit late, but it is an acknowledgement. And he'll talk about that. Anyway, uh, Dr. Wallace, um, he's the inventor of Alice, A L I C E, chat pocket, chat bot and AIML, Artificial Intelligence Markup Language Software, if you will. Um, it's a three-time winner of the Loebner Prize for Artificial Intelligence. That's a real-time Turing test. In 1999, Dr. Walsh released the ALICE software as free open source. And today, as many of the AI bots online use this technology, Today, Dr. Willis is Chief Science Officer of Pandora Bots Incorporated, a company devoted to building commercial applications of the AI ML technology. And he's also uh, got his PhD from Carnegie Mellon University. Without any further ado, here's Dr. Willis. Thank you. Can everyone hear me okay? okay. This, box, this big hall. Well, um, we had some uh, technical issues here today that uh, prevented us from giving a really good demonstration of our software. So I'm going to send some links to Doug that he'll put up on his website. And you can check it out later. But that kind of gives me the opportunity to give a more um, personal, philosophical, historical perspective on our uh, AI ML technology and the Alice Bot. Um, so I told Doug that I would, like, instead of having a, a PowerPoint, I would, I would give a show and tell. And uh, the first item I brought for my show and tell is this medal, which is called the Logan Prize. And um, as every coin collector knows, a coin or medal has two sides, obverse and a reverse. The obverse is the front, the reverse is the back. So on the reverse side of this medal is a picture of Alan Turing. And Alan Turing, um, as Doug mentioned, is considered by many people to be the father of computer science, or a father of computer science. The reason for that is that he made three great accomplishments in his lifetime. The first was um, Alan Turing was born in 1912. His first accomplishment was during the 1930s. Uh, he invented something which we now know as the Turing machine. And this is a mathematical abstraction, a mathematical description of a computer. And basically what the Turing machine is, is a, a, a model that shows that you can do any type of effective procedure using a computer. And one way to think about that is that in, in the 1930s, and people were not really sure that you could do every type of mathematical function that you could do by paper and pencil on a machine. 
So for example, if you think about you know, long division or calculating a square root function or calculating a cosine function, um, they, they had procedures for doing those on, on paper, with paper and pencil, but it wasn't clear at that time that you could build a machine that could do all of those functions. And what Turing was able to prove with his abstraction is that yes, in fact, any procedure that could be written down on pencil and paper could in fact be done by a computer. And furthermore, he invented a special version of this uh, uh, object called the universal Turing machine. And the reason that's important is that the universal Turing machine encodes the operations of the Turing machine itself. And now, if you invent a new computer language or a new computer, if you can prove that that language or that computer, by a few steps of logic, is equivalent to the universal Turing machine, that means that your new language or your new computer can run any program that runs on any other computer. So it's very important for people when they invent a new language to try to prove that it's Turing equivalent, so to speak, because that means that any other program from any other language can now be translated into their language and run on that new language. So the, the, the mathematical description of a computer which Turing invented Probably, if he had accomplished that alone in his lifetime, he would still be considered to be the father of computer science because it's such an important invention. But he went on to do two other important things. Next was during the war, during World War II, Turing was recruited by the British secret intelligence to work on cracking the Enigma codes, the German Enigma codes. So what that was was that the, um, the Germans had a system of sending instructions from their central command in Berlin to all of their far-flung forces throughout the world using a secret coding method, using a machine called the Enigma. And the Enigma was very much like a like an old-fashioned teletype. It was a, it looked like a typewriter, and you would type in messages to it. The messages would then be encoded and transmitted by radio, say, out to the Atlantic Ocean to some U-boat where they would be received using a similar Enigma device, a similar typewriter device. And once the signal went into that device, it could be decoded into legible instructions, which then the U-boat could carry out. What the Germans didn't know was that the British were listening in to these radio signals. And they, they created an enormous effort during the war to decode these signals. Alan Turing was probably the single most responsible person for figuring out the mathematical algorithms and programs needed to decode those German Enigma codes. And probably without his efforts, the history of World War II may have turned out quite differently. Because if you think about how the um, Germans went about conquering countries in Europe, um, they were successful in conquering basically every country in Europe except for, uh, at that time, well, England or, or Great Britain. The reason that they couldn't do that, even though they had a larger air force and larger navy and so on, was that every time they went to attack England, the British knew exactly where the attacks were coming, so they could send up their fighter planes to attack the German bombers without having to fly around a lot looking for them. And in fact, the, the British had to use subterfuge in some cases and allowed some attacks to come through so that they wouldn't they wouldn't show their hand, they wouldn't tip their hand to the Germans and let them know break these codes. And it was during that effort that uh, Turing and other people working at a place called Fletchley Park in Britain actually built what we would now think of as the first computers. The machines were called BOMBS, B-O-M-B-E, BOMBS, and um, they were basically gigantic electronic computers devoted to doing one task, which was decoding these German signals. Well. Um, Turing was never recognized for this work during his lifetime because the project uh, to decode the German signals was called the Ultra Secret. It wasn't even revealed until the 1970s that the British could have this capability. In fact, the history of World War II had to be rewritten after the 1970s because of these revelations. None of the people who worked on this project received any official recognition or medals or anything uh, honoring their work. And, um, you know, I, I often think when um, Winston Churchill said that thing about 
never before had so many, owed so much to so few, that he wasn't.